Now that we've had time to reflect on the Minnesota Vikings first preseason game, we got some players that moved up and some players that went down. We'll get into that right after this. Let's go. All right, we're going to get the obvious out of the way here first. When you think about players that move up and down, we're going to start with the quarterback position. Obviously, Mond wasn't up. Mannion was a down. Mon showed, Mon showed a lot of improvement. I mean, not perfect, but he mm-hmm. definitely made steps. And Mannion just kept being Sean Mannion, which in a way is kind of similar to, to moving down. But like, yeah. <laughs> get quarterbacks out of the way, they're done with. Let's get into our list of three players that went up and three players that went down. Before we do that, though, I want to thank everybody for watching GG Sport Podcast, podcast of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, once again, we're on a road to a thousand. We're, we keep improving on all the stuff we're doing. Uh, we're hoping that you guys like what we're doing with these the slideshow and everything. So hit that subscribe button. We're continuing to get better. And yeah, let's just jump right into this. All right. Sounds good. Also, make sure to like the videos for us, please, and comment okay. your thoughts on them as well. We want to we know what you guys are thinking here. So anyway, start out. Start out the running back position. Could have gone Ken A here, but instead we went with rookie Ty Chandler. Mm-hmm. Ty Chandler's moving on up. So, yeah, I loved what I saw from Ty Chandler. Taking a look at a few of his stats here, uh, five carries, 50 yards. He had the one kicker turn for 56 yards, PFF grade of 88.5. And one of the things that I really liked about Ty Chandler is the vision was great. Uh, he's quick, quick making decisions. He's a one cut go type of guy, which we talked about in our uh, review video. If everyone mm-hmm. wants that yet. So, man, what I saw from Ty Chandler is a guy who potentially could be uh, starting committee running back for the this Minnesota Vikings team in the coming years. Yeah, no, he was impressive. Um, I said it in, I think, our last video, too, is, I don't know, he ha- like you said, he has that, like, that little wiggle to him that I really like, and, and I mentioned it before, it, like, it, it just kind of reminds me of uh, Saquon Barkley a little bit where it's kind of like his body is move is like straight forward, but his legs are like moving around. His hips are cruising around. I don't know. There's something special about seeing a player do that. And then, you know, talking about his kick return, I mean, he ran, he ended up running right well, he, into our own player, right? Uh, yeah. Ran and right to our own player, but then bounced right out, went around. Uh, I mean, he just, he just ha- seems like he's a, like an all around running back already. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was some some big holes and, and actually some good play from our uh, second s- string defensive line and we'll, or our offensive line. We'll get into that a little bit more here soon. But yeah, man, I think he was definitely impressive and I'm excited to continue watching him in the preseason. And it'll be interesting what we do with him as far as, you know, it's going to be tough having four running backs on our roster um, go without cutting him anyone, but if he gets cut, I think this is a guy he who gets picked up immediately, and I yeah. don't think we want to do that. So I'm hoping we can get him some punt return, and at, at the very least, at this point, it seems like there's a chance he could be the second kick returner, but he knew the first. But if we can get him some punt return, and it'll give us a good excuse to keep him on the roster just by that by himself, um, that would be nice. So we'll yeah. see, but uh, for sure. And we haven't even seen him as a pass catcher, which we know he's, yeah. he's really, really good at. We haven't right, even seen him right, as right. yet. So there's a lot to be unlocked with this kid yet. So definitely. Cool. This next one, this next one hurts. Ola BC Johnson is on his way down a little bit after this week. I'm a huge Ola BC Johnson fan. I thought the way he stepped in his rookie season, mm-hmm. and I think he had like six touchdowns and like 400 yards. Right, I really appreciate right. what he did. I think he has a ton of talent. Obviously, at last year was unfortunate with the ACL tear. He was actually a starter in 2020 before Justin Jefferson emerged, but this first game for Ola BC Johnson was not impressive. Um, three targets, no catches on those targets. I believe there was a drop in there, and a mm-hmm. 47.7 PFF grade. Now, obviously, it's his first live game action in over a year since tearing his ACL. So I right. think there's a lot to be unlocked here with Ola BC Johnson. I still think, I still think Ola BC Johnson makes the team, but this right here was very disappointing to see sucks for him. I hope he bounces back. He's a good kid. I'm sure he will bounce back, but as after the first game, a little shaky um, again, got to put the precursor out there though. He was, he did miss a whole season. So he's still yeah. getting back in. Yeah. That is a good point. I want to say that I, w- I haven't been as high on OBC Johnson as you and a lot of other people, actually. Um, when he did come in as a rookie, it was very impressive. But then I think ever since then, it was pretty underwhelming compared to that rookie year. Um, when he did start for Justin Jefferson, obviously it's Justin Jefferson. He's going to come take that job. But a part of it was OBC Johnson. Just He just he wasn't really that guy. Um, he's already, you know, he lost KJ Osborne again to KJ Osborne for that fourth job our third wide receiver job last year. 
but then he did tear his ACL. And you make a great point that this is his first game action since coming back. Um, I wasn't ex- extremely impressed with him in this preseason game. I thought ISM definitely took yeah. took the leap on him as far as for that fourth receiver spot. But you're right. I mean, you know, first game action in a year. So we might see him uh, increasingly improve throughout this preseason. And I don't, I think, I don't think he'll get cut either. But I honestly with the, but I don't know, because with Mitchell and Jackson, how they did, I mean, you know, at this point, I honestly, I think ISM's a lock as far as everybody else outside of him. I don't know. I think any of them could honestly be cut potentially. Yeah, for sure. But like you said, disappointing showing, um, hope, hope he picks it up coming game. So anyway, let's get into those big guys up front. Next guy we want to talk about here, Minnesota Vikings rookie at LSU, Ed Ingram. He's on his way up. So. We all know before this game, Jesse Davis was like the incumbent starter after coming in in free mm-hmm, agency. Mm-hmm. He's been he'd been getting a lot of the first team snaps. Ed Ingram had been mixing in there during his vet days, but right, near the right. end, like in the week before yes. the preseason yes. game, Ingram started getting some first team reps, yes, and did. we saw him step in with the second team in the in the first preseason game, and he really he really showed out. Looking at his stats, I mean here, that whole second team in general did well especially for ty chandler that's like i mentioned before um but yeah dude yeah, yeah. Him, he, he's a big part of that he's a big yeah. part of that um 87.3 pff grade uh zero sacks allowed and one pressure in 17, 17 pass snaps. blocking snaps that's impressive coming from a young kid i know he's playing against the second teamers but he is outperforming a lot of those second teamers so you know, and, and a lot of people said, you know, we needed this guy, like we talked about in a previous video, we need this guy to step up to make this draft 100% great. Like Andrew Booth, we didn't put him in here, but he had some ups and downs, he had some penalties, but overall he covered pretty well. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, Ed Ingram, the other second round pick, man, if he can if he can shine and become a starter this Dude, season, it's this exciting. is going to be a win. And yeah. the scene didn't show us a lot, but he didn't show us anything bad no. either. So and I was, I'm, I'm excited about Ed Ingram. Actually, two things I want to mention. One thing that pisses me off a little bit is NFL.com that took like eight rookies and gave them grades or whatever they hit. They ended up giving Ed Ingram a C, which is the lowest on their list. I don't know what they were watching. I don't know where they're getting their stuff. I thought he did fantastic job. And it is extremely exciting uh, to, to because it kind of came out of nowhere. It's like Jesse, this is Jesse Davis's job. And then, all, oh, yeah, yeah, Jesse Davis' job. And then all of a sudden you start hearing, like, Ed Ingram's getting these first-team reps. He's getting these first-team reps uh, more and more. And then come preseason game, and he shows out the way he did. And it is just exciting because now, I mean, you're getting that vibe that, you know, he could honestly start the season as the starter. It, he, it's not just Jesse Davis's job for sure anymore. Um, it's not his job to lose anymore. I think we're coming on to an actual – battle for the right guards starting position and whoever plays out the best i think is the one that's going to get it yeah speaking of jesse davis <laughs> jesse davis is on his way down so after this game i read an article and they said that ed ingram won even before he stepped on the field because of how much davis struggled early on in that game mm-hmm. he didn't play much he played i think those the one or two drives looking at his stats he had eight eight pass blocking plays allowed one sack and a PFF grade of 45.4. Uh, the one sack was that sack on Mannion where you could say maybe Mannion held on to the ball too long, but he did break down, let the guy through. Um, just, yeah, I mean, not, you know, and that coming in, nobody really thought he was going to be, you know, like a huge upgrade. Uh, he had played tackle for Miami last season. He was really bad at tackle, but he was a serviceable guard. Mm-hmm. And again, maybe it's just first action with a new team trying to get used to the system and everything, but just with and this is only this only makes this only looks worse because of how well ed ingram looked as well so yeah jesse davis i i i know people were thinking like mid-season ed, ed ingram might start ed ingram like you said he might take this job by week one and then yeah. you have a pretty high price backup in davis who signed a three million dollar contract but it is what it is man. i mean if your, if your rookies step up you gotta play them yeah i mean i'm it's it's been one preseason game but when you take that with all the other hype that's kind of happened in the last couple weeks um with ed ingram switching out at that first team and everything. I mean, honestly, I'd probably put my money on Ed Ingram taking that job by, by the first, first game of the year. So, which would just be so exciting because who would have known? And cause that's the thing about Ed Ingram is that is like the pick that will, if he turns out well, it can make all the trades with the Packers and the lions and all that stuff worth it. He is that guy. If he ends up being started from week one, which none of us probably were expecting this early i mean 
Yeah. We I win mean, though. I think we win those trades. Yeah. I mean, people had a third, third or fourth round grade on a guy like uh, Ingram. So p- taking him to the second round is a bit of a reach, but size, power, looking, looking pretty good. in the run game. Mm-hmm. Good, good. All right. Moving on to another free agent acquisition here. Jordan Hicks. Now, Jordan Hicks, we think he's on his way up. So Jordan Hicks was a guy when we signed him, we signed him, him and Harrison Phillips kind of on the same day, first mm-hmm. day of free agency. They come into the building and was like, oh, God. Uh, Harrison Phillips, man, this guy's going to be amazing. Oh, we got Jordan Hicks too. Very undervalued. Um, yeah. I didn't know a lot about the guy, but looking him up, uh, leadership is a plus with this guy. He, and they said in Arizona, he was a very, he was a really good player. So he had uh, like six know, sacks him, the other year or something yeah, like that. Seeing him put up stats like this in this game didn't surprise 14 me. 14 snaps, 14 five snaps. tackles in a quarterback hurry. Yeah, for sure. So I'm really excited to see what jordan hicks will do i think he's kind of secured that starter like i said when he came in yeah super excited no outside of arizona a lot of people didn't know the guy but man so far so good very impressed i think we got ourselves a a starting linebacker yeah and i know because he played pretty well for the eagles uh for a while there too i believe and then he went to arizona people were kind of down on him then again and then he showed up last year and yeah when we got him i was i was kind of putting him as almost like a Jesse Davis type player where you just kind of have them in there. So a rookie can come and take his job later on. And honestly, watching him in preseason one, I don't think it's going to be like that. Even with them, how we do like and a guy that we could have put on this list, Asamoah. Um, and so Asamoah, I'll just go with that. But um, actually, I want to say that another, the other guy, Phillips, is another player that absolutely is on his way up. But it's super obvious. I think everybody knows that this guy, yeah. that guy's going to be a stud. Um, but yeah, back to Asamo. I thought Asamo, like you know, he's going to be in that place, or Asamo might be able to pass him up. I do like Asamo. I don't think he, but I think Aaron Hicks definitely showed him up enough that no, he is not ready for someone, a young player, to come take his job anytime soon. And that only means good things for our defense unlike uh, Jesse Davis in the Ed Ingram situation. Yeah. So, yeah, really excited about this signing now. Hopefully hopefully he keeps it up and ends up uh, holding down that starting spot. Uh, moving on to the from a veteran linebacker to a young linebacker in Chaz Surratt. Chaz Surratt, unfortunately, we feel is on his way down. Now, he, he didn't uh, – Rick Spielman took a shot on him in the third mm-hmm. round last year. They also could have put um, Wyatt Davis on this list too because he is looking like a mistake. Um, but another pick last year that just did, hasn't worked out. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't do anything last year. He rode the bench. This year, he he's getting some opportunities, but in his, you know, he missed a tackle and he allowed two catches. Just you know, with the way that Jordan Hicks looks, with the way Brian Osamola looks, obviously we got Eric Kendrick. And Troy, back I there. mean, Troy, Troy Die had Troy six guys, pretty six solid total touch or six total tackles himself. Yeah, I mean, you sure. could put him on the up list, you know. So just and again, this might be a, a like a product of his surroundings but nobody around him everybody around him shined and he didn't do much obviously like i said yeah. missing tackles and allowing catches here in coverage jordan hicks was great in coverage obviously as you saw so unfortunately for the young kid i think it's going to be a fight for him to make the roster just i mean he didn't look good and just the way that everybody else looked just doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't help his case unfortunately he's young maybe he can turn it around but yeah. this first I mean, preseason game didn't give you a lot of high hopes yeah, the reality of it is he is a quarterback switch linebacker, so he was already raw on defense to begin with. He's just very good athletically. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I think it's a bigger learning curve than Rick Spielman for sure expected. Yeah, um, and it was kind of a reach at the time, anyways. But I was hopeful. But you know, I think Troy Dye keeps in, uh, improving, and Asamoah. I mean. He's probably one of the most the players I'm kind of most excited to continue to watch just because his energy and his uh just I don't know, man. He just doesn't he doesn't stop. His speed, right. sideline to sideline speed, just motor on that guy's beast. And yeah. I think we'll continue talking about him as preseason goes on. For sure. Yeah. But we'll see. Hopefully you can turn it around. That'll do it for our ups and downs after week one of the preseason. We'll see you guys next time. Skull Vikes.